Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. I thought I would sit down and do another video for you guys and gals. Let me get a sip of my water first. My beautiful radio voice going and let's talk about this. All right. So lifting weights and it's something that people need to understand when it comes to lifting. The reason that we lift weights is to gain muscle mass. And we need to be very, very clear on that. And I don't care what your goals are. People are like, well, I lift weights because I want to burn more calories to lose more fat. I lift weights a ton of, I lift weights to be better at my sport. I lift weights to have this one rep max. Okay, all of that is fine. But what pathway does all that occur through? It occurs through hypertrophy. It occurs through gaining muscle tissue, thickening your muscle fibers. Let me explain. Anytime someone says, hey, I want to tone up, do they not understand what that means? They're seeing in their mind, okay, this person is toned. I'm like, that person has 20 pounds of muscle on you. They're like, what? A lot of times, when it, especially women, that throws them off. I'm like, that woman has 20 pounds more muscle than you do. So if you want to tone up, you're going to have to gain 20 pounds of muscle. But then they're like, well, she doesn't weigh that much. I'm like, yeah, because toning up usually means losing fat and gaining muscle okay that is how you get toned that's how you do it you know but they see that and they're thinking but she doesn't look like a bodybuilder yeah because she didn't take it to the extreme she gained 20 pounds of muscle not 50 pounds of muscle do you understand the difference and gaining 50 pounds of muscle is probably in that case going to require magical supplements and you guys know exactly what i mean by magical supplements we're not talking the stuff you buy at the store all right that's what's required so but they'll see that and get confused and then they're not realizing she's just really 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 lean and that's a big factor too so usually when people see the women who they think are crazy jack the the bodybuilders it's because they've dieted down really to a very low body fat Okay. Now, what would happen if you were to just lose weight? People say, well, I'm doing it to lose fat. But if you just lose fat and you don't gain any muscle, you don't have that much muscle underneath the fat. So you're going to look like the person, you know, how do I put it? You're going to potentially look like someone who is emaciated, who looks sickly. Okay. You're going to look unhealthy. You're going to look like someone who you would say they look like an anorexic because that's what would happen if you just kept losing fat and you didn't gain any muscle? You have to fill some of that out. You need some, some muscle tone and some substance there. Okay? Otherwise, you just look like a skeleton. And even then, if you're losing body fat and you're not lifting weights, you're losing muscle the entire time. So that's why when people keep dieting and dieting and dieting down, they just look emaciated because they're losing muscle tissue also. So unless you give your body a reason to build tissue, tissue, it is not even going to keep what you have. So even understand for those modest purposes, we are trying to gain muscle. All right, uh, same thing when it comes to strength. Someone says, well, I want a big one rep max. All right, that's fine, but how much neural drive and technique do you think you're really going to get? Tell you what the research says. All, all that other stuff is about 10% of your strength. 90% of your strength for you as a person comes from the muscle that you gain. 90% of it. You can always gain more muscle to bring your maxes up. Always. If you can gain the muscle. Now, people say, well, how come different people have different size versus strength? Because different individuals, we're only talking about you as a person. When you're comparing different people, different people have different limb lengths. They have different muscle fiber distributions. They have different insertion points. Their levers are going to be a little different understand so it's a, it doesn't always work in a head-to-head -head comparison but when you take the same person or you take two identical twins oh it absolutely will work size always equals strength or at least strength potential because again 90 percent of your strength on a max comes from the muscle that you gain all that other stuff we do as power lifters counts for about 10 percent okay and we're talking the primary mover someone can obviously have stabilizers that are not massive and still have a big lift okay but the primary movers in that lift are going to have to be big if they have a big lift that's just how it works 
Uh, the same thing when it comes to sports performance. People are like, well, I'm, I'm training this whatever joint specific angle for whatever for throwing or punching. And they're doing the joint specific. They're like, well, I want that performance. Well, how does it increase the performance? Like, do you really think the, the weightlifting is doing something for to your nervous system there that you're not already getting from your sport? In other words, you're sparring for fighting, your practice, your training, your skill work. Uh, same thing with field sports, everything else. Your, your skill work is what gives you the skills to play. That's where your motor unit learning is. If you're training a certain joint angle with a muscle in the gym, you are gaining the muscle fibers. You are thickening the muscle fibers. You're making them bigger that work that specific movement pattern at the joint angles that you're doing it at, okay? So you, your goal should be to maximize the muscle that is involved with that movement. And that gives you, just like we talked about the strength earlier, right? That gives you more force production, okay? Directly, it directly contributes to higher force production, any increase, muscle fiber thickness okay so muscle gains have a direct direct relationship to force production okay at the fiber level for each individual muscle fiber and the muscle fibers are what's creating the force and contracting it so you see where we're going here how about all the other health benefits uh, the reduced chances of cancer where does it come from well because of the improved insulin sensitivity which comes from what building muscle that's why lifting weights lowers cancer rates. We know that muscle tissue itself offers a degree of protection against a variety, most cancers. All right, same thing with diabetes. Muscle tissue is good for diabetes, fat tissue is bad for it. The more muscle you gain and the less fat that you have, the less likely you are to develop type two diabetes, even if your diet is not ideal dramatically reduces the chances because the muscle tissue improves your insulin sensitivity. Same thing with cardiovascular risk. Okay? You always get a net positive health benefit from gaining muscle. The exception is when you bulked up really fat, but that's not muscle gain. You over bulked. Or you use such copious amounts of illicit substances that those harmed your health while the muscle itself helped it, but it ends up being a net negative to your health, okay? But the muscle tissue itself, oh wait, so if your, your primary mechanism by which you're gaining muscle is lifting weights and eating protein, it always is positive to your health, all right? Hopefully we all understand this, and keep in mind, sarcopenia is the leading contributor to a lot of age-related deaths. Like just straight up sarcopenia and loss of muscle tissue. We should be focusing on gaining muscle. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys and gals next time.